we are just before the start of our ninth uh, Rourke Caribbean 600, hard to believe. Um, and it's going to be another wonderful race. Every year after I do this race, I write in my Seahorse article about how great this race is. So I'm here in Antigua, about to embark on my first offshore long distance race. Um, why? Why not? I would just, I'd like to give it a go, try it, see if I do like it. It's just different. I do 50 minute races twice a day. You know, this has no time limit on it. You just got to get to the finish. And I love the thought of that feat. So we're not expecting standard predictable trade winds, uh, but a complex series of forecasts. And that may open up the race quite a bit. We're, we're all a bit disappointed with the forecast, but we're hoping for the best. Um, I'm not thinking of any specific portion of the race. It's just going to have to be, we'll take it as it comes and make the right decisions and try and make the best decisions we can when the time comes. I'm looking forward to this year because it's going to be different. You know, when we have the trade winds, you kind of, kind of know the course and you know the subtleties and you know where the passing lanes are and you know going to Guadeloupe is generally very difficult. Uh, in a way, uh, a lot of the team haven't done this race before. It's the first time the boat's obviously been down here. There's a lot of experience on the course, a lot of boats, you know, have done it multiple times, so uh, we're, we're sort of applying our normal approach, which is be as prepared as we can, give it our best shot. Uh, the battle with Proteus is going to be a good one, you know, it's a very well sailed boat. Um, you'd have to think that the, uh, it's going to be 600 miles of nip and tuck. I think it's going to be a real, real, uh, real hard one and uh, hopefully we'll come out on top again, we'll see. And the hard thing about this race for us is that we're we're reasonably conservative on the water. We don't take a lot of risk. And this uh, this race has a feeling of uh, going to need to be a little bit riskier. Uh, with Fedo Cube, we should be faster in a wide range, not always. Maybe for reaching uh, Maserati will be faster. Um, Giovanni and uh, Maserati, great team, really good boat. What's unique about their boat is it was a Mod 70 like ours, but uh, it has foils. Um, unfortunately, the damage one side of their boats, they can only foil on a starboard tack. But on the starboard tack, like an America's Cup boat, they have the uptick foil and a T-rudder, and they uh, could potentially be, I think, anywhere from four to seven knots quicker. I never sailed against this boat uh, before. We didn't saw him sailing a lot uh, uh, when they modified the boat. So it's very interesting. The DSS provides the stability when we're going fast and we need it. They basically end up with a lighter, narrower, faster boat in the light. And when we need to be fast in, in, when it's windy and it's quick, we deploy the DSS and then we get the advantage of the dynamic stability there. Um, having been a figure race sailor for the last three years, um, kind of hoping to come away from this race with some more bigger boat experience, um, slightly more super yacht style boats, and you know, also working as a, as a bigger team and a bigger crew to kind of manage the, the workload, I guess. I think the hardest part is probably going to be trying to like stay awake and cope with sailing and racing like 24 hours the whole day. I'm most looking forward to being a bit sleep deprived, hungry I'm sure, maybe even cold, who knows, and having to, to really pull together all your senses and actually still accurately execute your role. And there's certainly some phases in this race where rest is going to be critical and quite easy. And then there's going to be other times when you know all hands on deck and we're going to be changing through the sails and you know, trying to make things as slick and efficient as possible. Hoping that I can kind of bring a bit of experience in terms of the um, sleep management and things like that. I've spent a lot of time researching that and spent a lot of time working on that for myself. There's a good chance we'll actually be, you know, in sight of each other for a lot of the race. In the end, if we win, if we cross the line ahead and correct on them, we're going to feel great. It doesn't matter, but it'll be close, I'm sure. Between us and Proteus, we have to be very careful about how we manage that side of it. If we find ourselves in front of them, then we have to know where they're going, but we kind of have to sail our own race because the conditions are going to dictate that. And if we're behind, you know, just stay close, wait for the opportunity to present itself, and. Uh, one thing you know for sure over this 600 miles, there will be plenty of opportunity. You know, we're here to win, uh, we're here to do well, as everyone is. It will be an adventure. An adventure we'd like to win though. So here we are, we're 17 hours before the start. Uh, everybody's getting ner a little nervous about it, but no one knows what's really going to happen. Uh, we're going to get a very different race, and that's very, very exciting.